Bank of Canada Governor Mark Carney did a little finger-wagging yesterday at Canadians who are too much in debt and not prepared for higher interest rates. When rates increase, it affects all of us, some more than others. Don Campbell and Peter Kinch are real estate educators and experts who separate real estate facts from real estate hype. It is my pleasure to welcome Kinch and Campbell back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Or Campbell and Kinch, I'm not sure. It does not matter to us. No ego. Okay, well, yeah, if as you long were as in people Hollywood, don't realize we're, a, we're not a law firm, though. That's one. Uh, no, that's true. But if you were, were in Hollywood, you know, it'd be about who's first. Well, it's really quite clear that if we ever did a movie, it would be Campbell presents Peter Kinch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a Campbell along with Kinch. Something like that. Something like that. Okay, over we're, to We're going to call ourselves the Mythbusters from now on. Why don't you just go with that? Okay, let's go with be, that. Might have so, been taken. what myth go. are you busting today? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot of talk around this. The the uh, I saw a headline the other day where. The actual Canadian real estate price plummets. And I went, really? The Canadian real estate price plummets? I guess I've missed something here. So I peeled the onion and looked at the, mm -hmm. it had the average price across Canada had dropped by 0.5%. The house price, yeah, zero point five. That's not a lot. That doesn't sound like that's plummeting. Not plummeting. Plummet. And it's also national, so all it, all it means is that mm -hmm. s that one of the markets slowed down during that uh, that uh, that period. Right, which happens. Vancouver, mm -hmm. and um, and then everybody thinks, oh my goodness, my house in Halifax is collapsing. You know, it's it's unfortunate that there are a lot of myths around uh, around the market, and we're going to bust a few of them. Sure. Today. So underneath the headline, the truth is, are we in a bubble? A, a what? Today. Well, the interesting thing is, and you look a couple days after that headline comes out, you get another headline saying that uh, Toronto downtown condo prices are soaring up 10% year over year. Vancouver mm -hmm. prices drop by 3% year over year. So, yeah, I think one of the biggest things is when we look in, and, and Don, you know, you, you love to talk about this. <laughs> the fact is there, you know, people talk about a Canadian market. They talk about a Toronto market. They talk about a Vancouver market. And the reality is you can't put that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, brush and, 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 right. and, and paint we, the entire market You can't generalize about thing. anything in life, really. But, well, uh, uh, why, why, do the, why do people do that then? That's what I always say. Is, you know why? Because it's easy. It's, it, it's easy mm -hmm. math. The report comes out. Everybody goes, oh, my God. And then that, that's right. it. So we, have a, we have a graphic just to kind of talk about the, the, the where we're going with the, right. you know, people are saying, well, there's a direct correlation. This big myth is there's a direct correlation that when the interest rates drop, housing prices skyrocket. And when interest rates go up, which they're about to do in the next, mm -hmm. you know, however long, year, year right. 18 months, then the, the market just collapses and really starts to fall off. Well, we have a graphic here comparing the greater Vancouver house values to the Bank of Canada lending rate. And it is a little bit complex, but if you see the dark line, the dark line yes, the is the interest rate. Yeah, it sure. Purple? Yeah, the non red one. The non red one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, I passed economics, so let's. It's very simple, although it looks complex. As you see the dark line, that is the interest rate mm -hmm. in the, the, the Bank of Canada interest rate. You see it drops 4%, that first big yellow arrow, mm -hmm. and, and there was no discernible move in the real estate market. You see how it just kind of continued yes. on. Then the, the interest rates went straight back up again a couple of years later on the next arrow. Right. No real discernible impact on the real estate market. It continued on its trend line. The only time that the average price went down is when the whole rest of the world went stop on the financials in 2008. And you can see the dip in the Vancouver price interest rates collapsed and the real estate market went down. So there, to, 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 the math tells us that there is no direct correlation for interest rates and the demand mm -hmm. on price. You know what, what the demand on real estate really comes from? Nothing to do with interest rates. It's GDP, job growth, and population growth. If you have those three, mm -hmm. you will have a continual demand. Now, selling a property at $1,500 a square foot, as I saw in the paper yesterday, yes. may be a bit of a glass ceiling to be it bumping could up against. Be a bit. <laughs> but, you know, when uh, you're thinking about getting into the housing market, it is nice when the rates are low. But Absolutely. if you're going to get in, you're going to get in, and you kind of take the rates as they are. That's, that's exactly but it. But too many people, according to Mark Carney, are remortgaging, putting Absolutely. second mortgages on their homes. Uh, Canadians, too much in debt. For what's happening, boy, isn't in this, the world? Isn't that a mantra that they've been saying for the last three, four, five, mm -hmm. six months? Consumer and debt. The the big the the, the big uh, sentence you hear from Carney and Jim Flaherty is mm -hmm. they don't want Canadians using their homes as ATM machines. 
Right. And there's that sense out there that Canadians are saying, wow, I've got some equity in the home. Hmm. I'm going to go refinance it up to the hilt. I'm going to take that money out and subsidize lifestyle. We've been saying for a long time, I have absolutely no problem, zero problem, Fanny, if someone accesses equity in their home up to about 80%. I don't like people going high ratio. In fact, now you can't, thanks to Jim Flaherty's yes. rules. But if somebody takes money out to 80% and then goes and buys a wealth-creating asset, i.e., purchases some investment real estate or another investment that m helps them mm. make money and adds to their overall mm -hmm. wealth. I have no problem with that so, as long as the asset helps offset the cost as long as it's not of borrowing the money. But if you're subsidizing <laughs> <laughs> lifestyle. Or a plane. Yeah. Or a racehorse. Yeah. Yeah. Statistics show more Canadians are subsidizing lifestyle and that's an issue. Okay, so but, don't but let's go. subsidize the lifestyle, but say you take the money out, you buy a condo in New Westminster, someplace yes. out of the city, yeah. affordable. Uh, you rent it. One day you think you might retire to it or something, maybe in Sawasan, yeah. and you b b and you take money out of your existing home. Say you own your home outright. Yeah. Yes. Take take the line of credit on that house. Don't take a new mortgage. It's cheaper money, and use that money to buy that investment property, but only with one proviso: that you're buying in an area where there's job growth and demand growth, mm -hmm. and that that the rent that you get from that property right now will right. cover all of your expenses, including your payment on that line of credit. Okay. If you're not, then you're just gonna get yourself in trouble. And and who do you ask about that? You go to the banker and say, okay, my house is worth a million bucks. That's right. How much uh, of a line of credit can you get for that? You know, again, if you can qualify, it's based on your income, your ratios and that, but right. a bank will typically give you up to 75 to 80% of the value of your house in the form of a mortgage or line of credit if you have the income that you can verify to qualify mm -hmm. for it. I think what uh, Jim Flaherty and Mark Carney are, are concerned about, Fanny, is they're seeing too many people do this for, uh, and they're seeing the debt increase. What they're worried about is in the event of, let's say there were was a bubble. We're, I'm not going to sit there and say there is or there isn't, but let's say that there was a bubble in certain markets and real estate values dropped. Jim Flaherty, the finance minister, doesn't want to see that massive amounts of Canadians under his watch mm -hmm. are going into bankruptcy or foreclosure right. and there's that kind of fear out there that if interest rates were to, to rise mm -hmm. significantly and this is the myth that Don's busting with his graph the thought is well if interest rates rise prices would drop some of the Canadians would be underwater that's why Jim Flaherty's most recent rules said he doesn't want to see Canadians borrow more than 80 percent of the value of their home in my opinion the quick and easy answer to slow Canadians down is to raise rates that's what Mark Carney would do, the governor of the Bank of Canada. Right. He's between a rock and a hard place. If he raises rates too much, he can slow down or even kill our economic recovery. So he doesn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. okay. But he wants to uh, slow Canadians down so that they're kind of talking it down. Yes, I was reading an article in the Globe and Mail, uh, and I don't know this man. He's an accountant, Ben Jones from Arizona. Ever mm -hmm. heard of him? Yeah. And he said Canada is in a housing bubble that has not burst yet. It's just a matter of time, and it's going to burst big time. What's happening in Europe, what's happening in the United States, it is going to blow up. And you know here. what? I love those guys because here's, here's what happens with those. He's a blogger. Yeah. Here's what He's happens the with the housing with bubble blogger. Blogger, that's right. And that's his whole thesis is there are housing bubbles around the world, and I mm. must call them out. Okay, but what but does that he mean look exactly? At, he doesn't bubble. look at the, Well, me, it means that the market has overextended itself. So, because okay, markets so. are pendulums, so the right. population demand and the economic demand and the job right. growth demand it isn't keeping up with the values. And that's what we're seeing in the downtown Vancouver market. That's why we're seeing increasingly more, more demand in the outlying areas, right. the Surrey's, the New West, et cetera. Is there a bubble that's going to burst? No, but I, what you are going to see is a slowdown in the demand and the, and the, and the average prices. Because sure. if there's no new properties coming onto the market at this moment, then because the new ones are more expensive, mm -hmm. obviously they're going to be selling resale and therefore the average price will be lower. Well, top-notch marketer Mr. Bob Rennie yes. was in here this week and he was talking about the four-hour sellout of Marine Gateway. Mm -hmm. Four hours. It sells out. I don't know how yeah. many stories. 38, 29, yeah, Twin something Towers, like that, something yeah. like that. And he suggests that that is transportation, transportation, mm -hmm. transportation. Absolutely. Like People want to be close to lines. They, they don't care about cars. They care about iPads. Yep. Kids today and... and well, and buyers today. And, and one of the big things, uh, Fanny, is people measure things today in terms of how much per month I spend as opposed to how much that costs. Mm. Less and less you're hearing someone say, well, it costs me 
1.5 million or $890,000 for that condo, but it cost me $890 a month, so that's affordable, which gets us back to interest rates. And I think the low interest rate environment is making things more affordable. The myth that we'd like to address is that there's this myth that there's a bubble out there and they said, you know, I've heard people say, well, if interest rates skyrocket, then, you know, that's going to cause the bubble to burst. Mm. There are actually two things, if you read behind the headlines, two mm. things that will cause a bubble to burst. Number one is a significant, now understand, significant, not Mark Carney saying we're going to raise rates by one quarter of a point. Right. I'm talking two to three percent jump over a short period of time. A significant jump in interest rates and a significant jump in unemployment. You know, we look at uh, historical rates, and we have a graph here that shows a historical um, long-term interest rates. And you can see back in the 80s, uh, you know, of course, we had the, the um, rates were up 20 percent. But if you look down at the bottom right of the graph, you can see we haven't been over 5 percent since uh, on well, 2001, I think. 2001. Right. right. And so it's been a long time. So uh, Canadians are being preconditioned to these low historic rates. But there's still a lot of room for a short increase in rates, and that's all the Bank of Canada is talking about. In the meantime, you know, Don, you were going to talk about a bit about the employment it, because it would take two things. Number one, spike in rates, spike right. in unemployment, and I don't see a spike mm -hmm. in rates coming. Or a spike in unemployment. And the other thing is, you even don't if, see a spike in unemployment. No, not, no, no, whatsoever. This is Canada, and we, Canada. We, have, we have more people working. Easy for you to say. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, we have Kidding. more people working now, substantially more people working now than we did before mm -hmm. the recession hit in '08. The United States is still hundreds of thousands, yes. hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. below the 2008 level, mm -hmm. hence the bubble. Up here, you look at the Halifaxes, you look at the North Vancouver's, you look at, at the Edmontons and the Calgary's where the jobs are coming in for the, like the shipbuilding or oil and gas, etc. Mm -hmm. Those places have a bubble. As a right. matter of fact, they're undervalued. Well, if you were a world investor, say uh, living in Europe, living in in France and you want to invest somewhere, a friend of mine who's very astute said, go to London, buy a flat in London. As, as we watch the Euro crisis melt in, the, in Spain mm. just about to yes. go down yeah. in Greece and all of that, uh, people who have the money to do such, uh, wealthy Europeans, wealthy Greeks are buying in London. Let me tell you another story is that a Swedish firm just came out, it was, it was a, a, a very small announcement, but a big announcement for Canadians. Right. They own 35,000 units right now, one, uh, uh, half in Germany, half in Sweden. They said we need to diversify. We looked they looked around the world, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, U.S., Canada, and they've decided that they're going to add 10,000 rental properties into their portfolio, and they're all going to be in Canada because that's where mm -hmm. the economics say that it's going to be great for the long term. They can put their money anywhere. Okay, can I buy that little uh, spot in Palm Desert yet or Arizona? <laughs> you can do whatever you want, Fanny, but I know let that. me tell you, let me tell you a little you bit of You loan me some money. Let, let, let me tell you one little secret. If you're mm -hmm. going to go down there, make sure that you do it right and you get a good, well, you, you have dual citizenship, so mm -hmm. that kind of helps. Yes. But if you go down there, make sure that you understand that you buy where you want to buy, not because it's cheap. Okay. Cheap Good is advice. the biggest mistake for buying a piece of real estate. Having future demand mm -hmm. is the how you decide. Sure. And One day I'll retire there, that's perhaps. Exactly. And yeah. there's always, you know, we talk about the plan idea, but the, it, there's always a difference between whether, is that something you're planning to do anyways? Is that part of Got your, your yeah. plan mm -hmm. long term? Well, now's as good a time as any. Mm -hmm. You're buying it for an investment property. That might be different. But we, in the back of our minds, there, it's all going to get away. You know, it's so cheap now in so many places. It's going to get away. I'm going to miss the opportunity. You were interested when we talked five, six years ago about right. buying down there, and you were kind of compelled to do that. The prices have come down. Even if the prices go back it. to then, you're still compelled to do it. So I know. You haven't missed it yet. I yeah. have trouble buying a car, you know. Yeah, okay. How nice to see you. Lovely. Thank you. Nice to Thank see you, you again. Much. Thank you very much. And uh, Peter Kinch, the Canadian Real Estate Action Plan, and Don Campbell, 97 Tips for Canadian Real Estate Investors. Shaw is pleased to announce the 2012 Fill the Food Banks campaign starting this week. For more information, visit TogetherIsAmazing.com. Remember, you can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4.